Yo guys, Master Markov here, and today we're going to be showing off one of the newest characters that comes with the Risk of Rain 2 Survivors of the Void DLC, the Rail Gunner. Now, with the Rail Gunner, you're going to be focusing most of your attacks on having high crits and high damage and single shot targets. Now, some of the main items that you want to be using whenever you're playing a normal playthrough of Rail Gunner are going to be high crits and high one shot damage. These include white items such as crit glasses, crowbar, and gasoline. Now, for Lensmaker's glasses, this usually increases your crit chance for most characters, but for Railgunner, since crit chance is changed to crit damage directly, you're going to be increasing your damage every single glasses you get. Same with Crowbar, this is going to help increase your one-shot ability, and Gasoline is going to be able to spread that damage evenly. Now, whenever you're getting a green rarity item, you're going to want things like, say, Will the Wisp for the same exact reason as Gasoline because it has a huge plume of effect that affects multiple enemies in a single area, as well as Ukulele because Ukulele will allow you to spread that one shot damage to multiple targets. Now, this could be done either with Ukulele or the newest void item, Polyloot, but Polyloot limits that damage to a single target and isn't exactly going to be as effective. Now it's good for bosses that you can't one-shot with your supercharge abilities, but it isn't very good when you're fighting normal enemies. Now, moving on to some of the green items you can get with this character. Now, since Railgunner works very different to every single other character, because their crit chance is turned into crit damage directly, and every single time you hit the crit area on any enemy is guaranteed a crit hit, you want to increase your critical damage by increasing your critical chance as much as possible. So, you're going to want items like Harvester Scythe and Predatory Instincts for your green items because these are going to increase your crit chance respectively. And Harvester Scythe works basically like Leech Seed because every time you do a crit hit, you will always get healing back for that as well. Predatory Instincts, I wouldn't necessarily recommend too many of those. They don't go beyond the natural three anyways. So it's highly suggested that you only get three and focus everything else on Harvester Scythe because who doesn't like healing? Now, another green item I will suggest to get is actually Fuel Cell for your orange item and whatever equipment you have, you're going to want to get the Ocular Hunt. Now, most people will think, okay, you get 100% crit chance, how is that going to help you? Well, if you always have 100% crit chance, then that translates to 100% crit damage for the railgun. And with fuel cells, you want to be using it as often as possible. Now, this is probably one of the few times that I would ever recommend actually having a lunar item, because most lunar items don't do great on characters like this. But in one of the rare instances, I have to suggest the Gesture of the Drowned. Now with the Gesture of the Drowned, since your equipment cooldown is reduced by 50% and activates whenever it's off cooldown, combining this with Fuel Cells allows you to always have your Hocular HUD up. With these green items comes their counterparts in the new Void tier for the Survivors of the Void DLC, such as Ukulele's Poly Loot that we've already discussed, as well as Plasma Shrimp for ATG missiles, and the Void Scent Flame for Will of the Wisp. Now I cannot recommend getting Plasma Shrimp for the ATG missiles, because while ATG missiles are good for this character, as well as some of Plasma Shrimp for most all characters, Plasma Shrimp does not deal that damage directly based off the damage that was dealt from Railgunner's shot, rather straight base damage that the Railgunner has, so it is not as effective as ATG missile would be. However, Void Scent Flame, I do recommend over having Will of the Wisp if you can convert that, because while Will of the Wisp does do nearly the same exact damage as Void Scent Flame, and since we're trying to go for all one-shot kills here, Void Scent Flame essentially combines the Will of the Wisp with the Crowbar tier item, and puts them together to hit a lot more enemies effectively. Plus, since it's faster damage, how could you deny faster damage? Now with these new item tiers also comes the Singularity Band. And with the Singularity Band, it is basically a pocket primordial key. And seeing as you want as many enemies in a single area to either do piercing damage or use your supercharge, you want to use the Singularity Band as much as possible. Though, unfortunately, they will corrupt both bands that you have, which are good 
but do not work as well as Will the Wisp alone does. It's personal preference of whether or not you actually want to use this item. Moving on, we also have the red tier of items, and with this, you are basically only going to want one thing: laser scope. Laser scope helps deal additional crit damage by 100% per stack. And since all of your hits deal increased crit damage, you are going to want to get this item. There's also the pocket ICDM, but this is only if you're stacking more ATG metal. Now there's also pocket ICDM, but this is only if you're stacking ATG missiles, which Personally, I would prefer more ukuleles and more Wilderwisp to that, and you don't really need that many missiles for this, so it's not highly recommended, but you can use it for your build. Next up comes some of the more rare items, being the yellow tier of boss items. Now with these boss items, there isn't too many that you could go wrong with, but Shatter Screen is probably the most highly recommended one for this build, purely because it gives you crit chance. Now, you do also get Critical Strike Bleed on enemies for 240 base damage. However, what enemy is going to survive long enough to actually take any of this bleed damage? Uh, there probably won't be one besides possibly Mithrix, if Mithrix can even withstand this at any phase besides phase 4. Now, lastly comes the Lunar Tier of items. With the Blue Tier, the only item I could purely recommend is Shaped Glass, because almost no other Lunar item actually helps and purely helps the Railgunner, besides having increased base damage by 100%. Unfortunately, this will reduce your maximum health in half. This could basically be fixed with the Stone Flux Pauldron if you really need it. But otherwise, I would highly recommend staying away from all Lunar items if it could be helped. Lastly, we're going to be going over the Railgunner's secondary abilities for all of his skills in his loadout. So, as I've just said, the Marksman has two secondary varieties, one being Sniper, the default setting for Railgunner, in which you aim down a long-range scope and shoot, and every time you shoot, you have to reload afterwards, or can continue firing depending on how many backup magazines you have. There's also the alternate ability, Marksman, which lets you shoot in a more medium to short range scope and does not require you to reload at all, meaning you could continuously fire from the secondary ability without having to worry about scoping down or reloading during that time. Now, unfortunately as a drawback to this ability, you're only given a 400% damage on weak points instead of the sniper's ability which gives you 1000% damage. Now, you also have two varieties of your utility skill. One is essentially a giant mine that sends a concussion wave out, pushing both the user and enemies away from the point of impact. Now, this is used a lot of the times for boosting yourself to various locations on maps that you wouldn't normally be able to get to with Railgunner's current movement, but because of a lot of unfortunate bugs in the geometry of Risk of Rain right now, a lot of the gravity and velocity for Railgunner and various other characters have slightly affected the game itself, so the current boost you may get from this skill may not reflect it after the next patch because they are reworking the physics for the game. Now, for the second variety of utility skill, you are given another mine-like bomb, but this time it has a delayed reaction explosion that essentially creates a small gravitational field that slows down time all enemies and all projectiles within that field, which makes it both easier for scoping down and aiming at enemies that find themselves within that field, lining up supercharged shots, but also dodging any projectiles that are within that field. Very useful for a sniper character, but I personally do not find it as useful as, say, the original variety of the utility skill. Now, this does not come with any drawbacks besides the fact that you can only hold one of these devices at a time instead of the first variety holding two, but it is basically up to personal preference for this one. 
Lastly, we also have two varieties of his special skill. One being Supercharge, which fires a piercing round at 4,000% damage and an extra 150% weak point damage on top of that. Now, unfortunately, after firing said shot, all Railgunner abilities for his Railgun are disabled, meaning everything other than his utility skill is disabled for that moment, for the next 5 seconds after firing the shot, and another 15 seconds before his special can be charged again. Now, be warned, even though you charge this shot for a good 3 seconds before firing, it does still have a delayed shot reaction of about a second and a half before the actual shot fires at whatever location it's going to be. So if you know there's an enemy that moves around a lot that you're trying to hit, you have to compensate for this. Now, the second variety of this special skill is the Cryo Charge. And with the Cryo Charge, it does everything that the Super Charge does with only half of the damage at 2000%, but does not give the increased 150% weak point damage if you do hit that weak point on top of that. However, it does freeze almost all enemies that it hits, which locks them in place for further shots afterwards, on top of the added advantage of your railgun not being frozen for five seconds due to overheating. This way, you could essentially use the supercharge at half of its damage, but are granted the ability to continue using your secondary and primary skills during that time. Now, beyond that are the two varieties of skins that come with the Railgunner. One of them being the Railgunner's default, the other one after either using any of the four new methods of beating the game, you do get the Sniper skin, which is called Marksman in this game, which is essentially the classic sniper skin from Risk of Rain 1. And that's about it for everything on the Railgunner. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this showcase. And if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe down below. Hope to see you next time with more Risk of Rain 2. Peace!